So if you like dressing up, then dress up. Maybe get ready in the morning and find a space. So if you like a change, then maybe not working from your bed, working from another table in the house, working from another room in the house. And that itself can bring a change from We'll be talking about the psychological effects of this 21 day lockdown. To talk about this, we have an expert with us, Sukriti Dua. She's a psychologist and a DAS movement practitioner, as well as a published author based in Delhi. Thank you so much, ma'am, for joining us. We are grateful to have you with us. Most welcome, Dushti. Thank you so much for having me. I'm more than happy to reach out to your organization and the people who view. And I think. Uh, the idea of women, all women-led organization is really empowering. So I'm so happy to be a part of this call. Thank you so much, ma'am. So let's uh, uh, just get into it, ma'am. This 21-day lockdown, all we are, uh, all all of us are practicing social distancing. This right. is uh, the only way forward that we can see right now. What do you have to say that what this so social distancing is having an effect on people? Right, right. So, uh, Rishti, I don't necessarily agree with the term social distancing, actually. I would rather call it physical distancing. Uh, since the time this term has come up, it is a, you know, a problem or an issue for some people as well. Uh, you will also see the hashtag trending, hashtag physical distancing, not social distancing as well. Uh, because it is really about physical distance, not social. Social refers to society, community, relationships and things like that, which are still continuing. We are still connecting with our community. We are still making relationships. We are still talking to people. So we're not socially distancing. We're not like existing as an individual with just ourselves. We are physically distancing. We are not physically being a part of uh, places together, organizations, events and things like that, which is what it is. So basically it, in my opinion, is more of physical distancing than social. When we call it social, we are saying that we're distancing from society, from communities, from relationships, which is not something I agree with. So physical distancing, yes. Social distancing, no. Wonderful. You gave us actually a deeper insight on the term. Definitely, I think because social media is there, we all are socializing on some kind of some level, even if it's online. Uh, definitely, ma'am, I'll agree with you on this, that we are doing physical distancing. Ma'am, what do you think the uh, you know, effects of this physical distancing that we are practicing right now, what are the effects that you are able to see in people because you're practicing uh, psychology? Uh, right. As a psychologist, what are you uh, witnessing? Right. So uh, the effects are very varied and I would say individualistic as well. I would, cannot uh, guarantee that everyone is feeling the same, like everyone is feeling low or everyone is feeling all right and happy and content because there might be two different types of reactions that people may have. There are people who love isolation. There are people who love to be by themselves, spend time on their own, read books, you know, watch movies or spend time with their own self. So those people are probably happier, I have seen. They are very happy that they don't have the added pressure to kind of go out there, make social connections, move out from their room, from their bed, from their comfort place and make connections with people. So those people seem to be very comfortable in their space at the moment. Whereas when I see other people who are slightly more outgoing, prefer to have changes, do not like monotony, those those are the people who are at the moment kind of a little bit low about having to sit at and again, I will not classify them as definitely having certain problems, but they might be feeling a little bit low or I would say irritated with just, you know, being bound to a place because they're not used to being bound to a place. So these are, these are definitely two different types of reactions. But uh, at large, when we say when there is a pandemic happening, we definitely understand that uh, there is going to be a certain sense of fear, a certain sense of uncertainty that may be happening or going definitely more people who already have anxious feelings within them who already have overthinking nature you can say so they might be able to you can you might be able to see fear and uncertainty a little bit more in them than in other people but it might be there at the backdrop so fear and uncertainty can sort of be a common thing which is the fear of what is going to happen is it going to affect me as well or and the uncertainty of how long is this going to go when am I going to be able to move out or what if I move out then if this comes back again like even after the 21 days there will be a time that not everyone will be moving out in the same way unless necessary because people will be cautious 
so that 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 sense of fear will remain for a little bit longer it's not something that is pertaining to these 21 days or but till whenever the lockdown is supposed to happen it can go ahead as well and it can definitely affect the long term mental health and the long term thoughts of people throughout this year as well so of course there are people with varied reactions and uh, varied levels of comfort at this time but a general sense of fear and uncertainty may be there in most people at this time I mean Sivani we are talking again and again again about the misinformation that the social media is spreading and which is also creating a lot of panic uh to so relief from stress surrounding us is creating us hmm so definitely misinformation is coming in the form of various social media and various televisions and communication that we watch when we say that and that may be the thing creating panic and then the conversation starting from that so the best idea in this case is to know your facts there might be places there might be websites that do fact fact checks now you have a lot of articles coming every day that do fact checks of certain you know whatsapps of certain articles that have come up so it's good idea to do a fact check if you're really interested otherwise it is also good to keep a safe distance from knowing and getting these news articles these whatsapps and your general time if your full day going to be involved in just reading you know a case how many cases increase this minute how many cases increase next minute and you know what is happening out there then there is a very high chance that that's going to get to you at some point of time so kind of distancing yourself avoiding watching news or reading these articles throughout the day and keeping maybe 2 hours or maybe 2 hours at the end of the day and one or two hours in the morning whatever is comfortable to you of course in your own time distancing yourself from that kind of can help reduce the panic in general and also not spreading these yourself not making one so like if you start if you read one thing you know we say it very commonly that is going gossiping it happens one person says something the other person adds another and you know it's a whole uh, different thing by the time it reaches at the end so making sure that even if you are the one who's relaying information to someone else you be true to what you know is a fact and not necessarily something you have heard or read from someone else so if you're someone who believes in anything that comes to you then i would say it would be good to kind of fact check or keep that information to yourself but if you're someone who does fact checks then it's great to put the facts out there because that can help reduce panic for everybody else I'm definitely that's a wonderful advice uh, but man there's so many people who feel that isolation leads to depression and they feel mm-hmm. that because they are in isolation they are getting more depressed what mm-hmm. you, you can do properly in this because you can't uh, go out you can't do anything about it what right. does you feel with this right again this would be something that is individualistic uh, drishti in the sense is isolation for some people like i said can be comfortable and for some can definitely not be people so feel- solution is depressing yes 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 to to feel isolation again can be when we say depressing we again mean that entire feeling of dejection uh the feelings of loneliness the feelings of not being part of someone else so there is again a difference between sad upset lonely and depression because we very commonly use the word depression you know loosely out there that you know are aaj mujhe bada depression ho raha hai that that just comes in very normally because it becomes part of our speech but when we say depression or depressing itself that's a lot more higher level of the feeling of loneliness the higher level of feeling of sadness not feeling motivated to get up feeling rejected by everybody around you so depression kind of comes at the other extreme end of this spectrum but the idea that isolation can lead to depressing symptoms like feeling sad feeling lonely is definitely there for some people who do not like being isolated who like being around people who like being surrounded by conversations by different relationships and just constantly being stimulated so losing that daily stimulus can definitely be sort of sad lonely and upsetting for some people but again i will not call it depressing it can feel like oh mujhe to depression hi ho raha it can it can feel like that to someone but if you ask me in psychological terms i will not call it depression so it can lead to sad lonely and depressing feelings for people who are not uh, used to isolation or who are not used to being by themselves or do not like their own company as much even sometimes that you know you don't like spending time in your own you like to spend time with other people more and which is again absolutely fine 
So in that case, it is great to understand what may be most comfortable for you and what are the things that help you, you know, keep calm in general. So even if it is conversations, even if it is relationships, it might not be possible physically, like I said again, but there are so many mediums now. There is social media, there is so many video calls, there are so many apps that you can, you know, play games on with your friends and things like that. So you can continually to keep yourself involved. It is just that if you kind of become very comfortable in that isolation, that is when the feelings can definitely emerge more. But there would be a need for that person themselves to understand that if this is not making me feel comfortable, then what can I do? But if that discomfort is getting too much where that person cannot see a way out of it, then definitely it can become a psychologically disturbing problem for them and they should try to seek expression in some way, talk to someone and maybe even seek professional help if it's getting very overwhelming. Um, um, yesterday only we had a report from coming from Delhi only that a patient who was kept in a isolation for uh, because he had symptoms tried to attempt suicide. And there because uh, um, th these kind of cases are being reported all around the country as well as uh, uh, outside the country because people are not in a good mental state mm -hmm. and affecting their mental health because of being in isolation either it's for preventive or for precautionary purposes mm -hmm. and what we can do to maintain good mental health in this kind of situation. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about uh, the suicidal spectrum, the idea that there are people who are feeling like they want to end their lives when they're isolated or when they have symptoms, that's something that you can see with any other medical ailment too. There are people with chronic illnesses, there are people who are living in vegetative states and they all might feel very, very low mental health and based on how low they feel, they might or might not be moving towards committing suicide. So. For, for those people, definitely keeping connections, keeping some sort of relationship going, making sure they have a space to express. So even though people in isolation in medical facilities right now might not have access to, uh, you know, talking to their own family members. So we read so much about Italy as well that people are dying and they're dying without their family members. They cannot even come to send them away. So that itself can also be terrible for the family and the person themselves. So making sure that if not that, they need, they have professional help. They have probably uh, a medical counseling, psychology or psychiatry team that is constantly visiting these patients and making sure that they, their expression, their emotional health is also being taken care of would be a good idea. But I understand in this scenario, it is very difficult because we already have a dearth of doctors, nurses, mental health practitioners, but this can be done. Probably and um, and and I mean again once again I cannot assure that this will definitely not lead to something, but it might be something that may help feeling less isolated for that person because uh, when you are a doctor and there is a patient, there is a high chance that it becomes very transactive in terms of your physical health, but nothing is done about your mind. And with so much happening, doctors also don't have the time to give you comfort that you know this is what is happening to you. So maybe having another psychiatric or psychology basically mental health team in the hospital that also takes care of the mind part for the patients can be helpful in that way but when you talk about uh, good mental health for generally everybody else who is at their homes who might be facing these certain similar thoughts or similar similar symptoms that might making them think that oh i'm not doing mentally well what they can do can definitely be finding out what made them comfortable before this what were the most things that have they had them comfortable? So let's say if you had a routine, if you used to go office every day, if you used to dress up, if you liked the change of places. So what are the things that you liked in the lifestyle that you have? Picking those up and bringing them back. So how, I mean, you could be, let's say, who liked dressing up for work, who really liked to go out and meet friends for that so if you like dressing up then dress up maybe get ready in the morning and find a space so if you like a change then maybe not working from your bed working from another table in the house working from another room in the house and that itself can bring a change from coming from one place that you are there throughout the day to another place and then helping you feel a little bit more structured that you know this is my space that i work at and this is my space that i relax at boundary that is kind of getting very blurred we, a home for everybody is very, very relaxing in many, many ways. So 
it's becoming difficult for everyone to do a longer work from home also yes. that you don't you're not finding that same efficiency so if you want to be continue to have that same efficiency you know things that made you comfortable you like those in the scenario previously and finding out creative ways to be able to include that today you know dressing up making a routine making sure that you talk to people so right now you can't talk to your employees while you you know do that but maybe have them on conference while you do that and if you want to side by going and calling them then somebody on call throughout the day that's if that's what makes you feel comfortable so finding out things that make you feel comfortable and bringing them to your routine today can really help you uh, be a part of that there are a lot of people we also need to recognize who do not have work from homes right now because they don't have jobs that can you know have work from homes again but in the same scenario with your routine and everything can still say the only thing is you need, might need to find things that you like to do and do that in that time that you worked so finding out things that you definitely like or things that you preferred uh, maybe maybe let's say if you had a hobby or if you liked to dance a little bit if you like to move a little bit finding all of that and bringing that into a routine so keeping a little bit of a structure is definitely going to help since home is not necessarily a place of structure for a lot of people so bringing that structure could definitely help and also making sure that your body moves a little bit what happens inside the house is our mind is constantly working but our body is not so that is also something that kind of creates a tension so the mind body nexus is important again so making sure that you find some time one hour two hour any point of time in your day or even half an hour whatever is most comfortable for you to move even if that means walking in the house even if that means dancing for 10 minutes even if that means exercising some people who like to go like going to the gym finding out creative ways you know i was seeing some videos the other day people who used to have dumbbells etc using different house objects picking up house objects with those weights and kind of doing that so finding out creative ways to continue all of that in a today's scenario would be helpful to kind of make you make you feel a little bit calm and then again finding out what makes you feel calm and making sure you do that of course finding out all of these things being creative can be a pressure in its in its own self so you can allow yourself to be as well there is no pressure to you know be on top of your good mental health throughout it is not necessary and it is not important for you to do that if you feel low and if you feel like i can't do this today don't do it today don't don't do it today because you wouldn't have for example if you're not feeling well you wouldn't have gone to work that day right but why the added pressure of still trying to do that why the added pressure of i have to do something in my day so if it's not feeling comfortable not doing it is also absolutely fine and giving yourself time to come up from this is also something that may be meaningful yes uh definitely i'm very well said um it is very important for us to stay positive and productive at this time right. as colleges what are you doing to remain positive as well as productive during this lockdown so i have something interesting for you when you say that it is important for us to be positive and productive and talking about that a minute ago do you really think it is important to be positive and productive what if you are not productive what if you are not positive does that make you not good or what does that make you yeah so somewhere uh, we have this notion because again being positive and being productive is something that has been created as a goal or i will say as a ultimate place to be at for someone so if you are someone who wants to feel positive who wants to feel productive then it's one thing but if you're doing it because there is social pressure because there is peer pressure then it is not going to help you even have your good mental health because ultimately you don't want that you're just doing it like you would have done anything else for example getting married at the age of 25 has also been a goal that every girl needs to have a lot of girls in india need to have at some point of time so that is again a created contract construct sorry and a a social pressure that comes for some people i will not say everyone not generalizing just giving it as an example so it comes up for some people so then again if you're using this as a you know i have to be positive i have to be productive and that in itself can create so much anxiety in you because that's not coming from inside of you it's coming from outside so figuring out first whether you personally want to do that 
would be great or if you're looking at it from externally so if you personally want to do that then again we go back to what we were discussing a few minutes ago is that figuring out things that make you calm that make you feel good that even if that is talking to somebody even if that is doing certain things that you have hobby for even if that's just binging on a netflix series which it's absolutely fine whatever it is that makes you feel positive and whatever it is that makes you feel productive but then again it should be very personal to you it should not be coming from aaj mujhe ye din ke end mein mere social media par dalna hai that i have done these these things if it's coming from the idea of wanting to show someone else or tell someone else or or that everybody else is around me is doing something like that then you probably don't want to be positive and productive and it is okay knowing that it is okay to just be because there is so much happening already we feel like hum to ghar baith gaye so there is nothing much to do now we feel a lot of we feel lot of that okay there is nothing much to do i have to be productive in some way but there is so much happening in your mind you are constantly thinking about what's happening out there you don't know about what's happening out there there is a sense of helplessness because sitting at home you can't even do something about what's happening out there unless maybe somebody is involved in some volunteering or if someone is involved in some campaign otherwise you probably cannot do anything so these feelings are also overwhelming noticing them staying with them and finding ways of expression so making sure you talk to someone about whenever you are feeling in a certain way that is not comfortable to you that could be someone in your house itself someone over call someone over video and if you are somebody who does not like to express or talk to people then finding your own way of expression so if you like to write or if you like to draw expressing through different mediums just making sure that those feelings find expression those uh, mental states find a space to be expressed also get acknowledged in many ways will be very very important because once you have acknowledged those then they will be very easily comfortable in your own self and you can you can understand whether the positivity productivity is going to come that come because of that or not because sometimes if you acknowledge your feelings feel like make you feel productive enough in the day that i acknowledge my feelings i did something for myself so again figuring out whether it's personal whether it's external and then working from it through that would be great and like i said before creating routines structures if that's something that works for you it would be great what are you doing again i'm asking you this what is your uh, you know routine that you follow to keep yourself um, so, so that is again for me something is very very different through the days every day is, is different for me in many ways so i there are days that i have online sessions there are days that i have work from places i work at documentation to do so i make sure that i do some work every day and i have household chores to do none of us have helps anymore so we have household chores to do as well so uh, maybe my first half of my day goes in the household chores and second half of my day goes in more of working and even if i'm not working and i'm doing some self care that is also fine by me i make sure that i do some movement ke dance or if it's a little bit of walking around and doing something that makes my body also feel active not just my mind so uh yeah just a little bit of that making sure that something or the other is happening and that's not necessary in terms of action it can also be in terms of even if i'm doing one hour of social media because i need to relax right now i need to pause which is fine so i'm just actually taking it by the flow and uh, making to do lists has helped me personally making to do list of the week not of the day because for the day it is very overwhelming so i make it for the week and uh, then i try to make sure that whenever i have time to put work timings in the middle of that i make sure to follow those things whenever yeah <laughs> thank you so much ma'am i think whatever you have said is uh, very important for us to know and realize because in these times it's very important for us to you know not not lose out on important things that is our taking care of ourselves and our yes. minds mm-hmm. uh, i think whatever you have said whatever advice and whatever routines that you have uh, you know asked us to follow i think it will it will very helpful uh, thank you so much ma'am for helping us out and we're grateful to have you in our family thank you most welcome and i think i had a great time having session itself i think this was part of my <laughs> self care somewhere where i was able to express all that was coming for me also and all that that i was trying to you know put out to people as well so it worked for me as well <laughs>